And you eventually, yeah. like Brock Lesnar, you're like what? Yep. Did you ever train with Brock? Like, I yeah. mean, he would be like a perfect, you know, training partner for a huge guy like that. Like, what was that scene like there before uh, we let Mike take it away? So then, uh, you know, I, this is a little bit later on, but yeah, I started training with Greg Nelson at the, the academy, the Minnesota Martial Arts Academy, and I met Brock. Um, we had known each other through amateur wrestling um, just very briefly. And then I, I helped him train for about, I think it was six months to a year, probably. Um, I think it was two of his title fights, something like that. Wow. How was he as a training partner? Awesome. One of the nicest guys I'd ever been around. Um, so did you work out with him at Greg Nelson's or when he opened up his private training facility on his own compound? Both. What, what was the the training facility like? And Mike Russo worked out there with you as well, am I correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So what was um, that training facility like? He had a, a, a really nice weight room. You had to walk through that. I mean, it was like everything you'd ever want right there. And then it was, it was like basically a wrestling room. Um, it, it was basically in a big barn. Um, great guy. I mean, took took care of me. Took care of the fighters. Um, Who else was in that room with you? Cole Conrad. Um, Stud. Uh, Marty Morgan was the coach. Uh, there was a couple other guys, but was Mark Kerr up there at this time? No. No, he wasn't there. Um, Did this you get there bit... after Mark? Yeah, I came after Mark. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, now was it a straight wrestling room? Is that the kind of trait you know Brock like to stick to his guns, or was did he have someone like Nelson there? Because Nelson's a technique guy, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It was there. No. It was it was pretty much live goes. Um, I don't rem don't remember doing a lot of technique work, but it, it was live sparring. I mean, we, we, we were going hard. I, I know I'd heard rumors like Brock didn't want nobody like hitting him. But that's not true at all. Like, he was fully committed and, and we had live sparring. Cole Conrad was, he was the man of the room. I mean, he's a star. He, he, he was an incredible wrestler, um, but he had good stand up. And I mean, he, he was the man in the room. Okay. Now, I mean, the rumor was that I, I mean, it, I mean, I'm from Chicago, Minnesota is you know, quite a bit a ways from, uh, from here, but the rumor was that, uh, he didn't like to lose even in practice. So even if you were to kind of get one up on him with the intent of showing him some technique, uh, he would shut the entire conversation down and be pretty angry. Is that, is that, no, I don't. I've never seen anything like that. And, and now that you say that, the, his BJJ guy was from Chicago. Um, Caprito. Caprito, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he was in the room too. Um, but I've never seen anything like that from Brock. Like, Marty was the coach. And, and I don't know how well you know Marty, but he, I mean, he was a huge, huge stud here in Minnesota. Um, great wrestling coach, uh, great guy. And I mean, Brock was, I never seen anything like that. He was, he was willing to learn. And, and obviously Comprito was great on the ground. And, and I think I mean, he gets he, a raw deal, man. Like if you, if you look at, you know, he had an illness yeah. that they said takes about 16 months to, to two years to kind of get through. Mm -hmm. And they explained is the one thing that you're going to lose is muscle mass and cardio. And he, I think he just came back too early, but yeah, like look at the guys he fought, but Frank yeah. Mayer, and and if you think like he doesn't have cardio, you know Shane Carwin is another example. But if you want to look at somebody that does that when he has cardio, look at this fight against Heath Herring. Yeah, I mean the guy absolutely went fifteen hard minutes against Heath Herring. Yeah, yeah, I mean he was he was a stud. I mean I there's no doubt about that. I mean obviously everybody knows, but. Um, I would, dare, I would dare to say he was underrated, you know. He, I absolutely agree with you. I 100% you know? agree with that statement. Yeah. All right. So, Miguel, this takes us to our international portion of the interview. <laughs> and one of my favorite international events is Octagono Extremo 